Welcome back to Thursday Night Football Preview. We've got the Seattle Seahawks traveling down to Dallas, Texas to take on the Cowgirls, who are nine-point favorites, 46.5-point over-under. It's going to be clear. It's going to be in the 60s. It's going to be beautiful football weather, just like we got here in New York City, the Big Apple. Both of you agree. Don't want to hear a word about it. Let's jump into the key injuries for this game. Kenneth Walker not practicing this week. Looks like he's going to miss a second straight game, which leads to Zach Charbonnet being the workhorse. A little bit inefficient last game. Hopefully we can get some more fantasy points out of Chabonet. Uh, we got Lockett, who's a little bit banged up. Gino maybe a little bit banged up, but nothing too serious on the Dallas side of things. Nothing that we don't already know about. Trayvon Diggs, Leighton Van Der Risch, one of your favorites, one of your trivia Par- favorites. Apparently and not having a good <laughs> yeah. season. Yeah, so uh, no like huge injuries, I don't think, over the last week or so for either of the two teams. When we look at the general storylines of the game, I mean, Dallas is obviously red hot. They're probably the hottest team in football right now. They've played some really easy matchups, so I don't want to like get ahead of ourselves, but there's a lot of chatter about Dak. A lot of chatter about Dak, MVP, about how his odds are still too low. Every week they're too low, but he keeps stringing together three touchdown, four touchdown games. Is he for real? Is he really the MVP? Would they ever actually give the award to Dak? Sure. It comes down to record. Like If they can win the division, I think so. But they're like, they don't have it in them to win the division. You, can there be a wild card MVP? I don't think they'll give it to one. I don't think so either. So you think whoever, I mean, right now it feels like it's kind of between those two, Dak and Jalen Hurts. It's not between Dak and Jalen Hurts. Actually, no they're probably my top two candidates, but I don't think like there's anyone far behind. I think Purdy has a better chance of winning than Dak. What do you I mean? I think CMC has a better chance than Purdy. CMC's up there. Purdy's getting disrespected. What are the lines? What are the odds? I won't have this. That feels crazy to say Purdy has a better chance than Dak. I don't think so. Niners are going to have a better record. Statistically, I think Purdy's better. But he he only – is he, though? Like, Dak's no way. got a Dak's great been fucking crazy box the score. last month. Okay, so Dak <coughs> is plus 800. Purdy's mm-hmm. not far behind him at plus 14. I mean – But what does but he that's, have Okay, so, so start with it's, the it's top Hurts odds. at one, Mahomes at two, Dak at three. Okay. So me – Purdy at six. Okay. Lamar is tied with Dak. Tua is slight, is in between Lamar and Purdy. So I think it's safe to say that there's a good chance that whoever wins that division wins the MVP award. Yeah, I just don't think they have it in them to win that division. Why? They got a tough schedule. But, I mean, if the Eagles drop to the Niners, then they face each other, and that's a division right there. Sure. But the the Cowboys would need the Niners to win and then beat the Eagles. Yeah, but like it, that, I mean, it was a one-score kind of game. Like, it's not like they can't. I don't know. I'm, I'm also not confident. Like, whoever the Dallas Cowboys – face later in the season. I'm not confident that they win those games. I this feel like they, they drop like shitty games. Where they just drop this one and it's like right, okay, there exactly. goes all like that. would you yeah. Everything is just they, they are gone. a team that like their momentum never seems to last. They build no. up so much, but like the leash is so short that it could just be taken away at any point. So I, I'm I'm kinda with you. I think there's just a lot of hype. And we've definitely been down this road before, but I'm gonna be honest, it feels like there's more steam behind this DAC MVP hype than there's really ever been before. Yeah. The Cowboys I mean, it was not a straight to, month. Of yeah. like not to harp on yards. it too much, but the Cowboys finished their season with the Bills, Dolphins, and Lions. Like, they're, yeah, they're going to they go undefeated there? Shit. Hell no. No, but Bills, Dolphins, Lions, that can legitimately throw for 12 touchdowns in those three games. Those are like defenses that you throw the fucking ball against. Sure, but I think you have to win all those games, too. I don't think it does you any good, like, losing them. I think you can have a really good record, get in via the wild card with great stats in a year where no other – QB's going to throw for fucking 48 touchdowns or something. And I think he has a realistic chance to win it. Like if they finish, if they finish 12 and five wild card, Philly's 10 and one right now. So I think 12 and five, even if they finish that way, wild card, he balls the fuck out over the last month of the season. Also, I think there's a chance he, he gets that. I get the argument. I just, I can't think of a recent one that hasn't been like a one or two seat. I mean, you could go back to like the running back comparisons, like when Adrian Peterson won it. Or like Alexander wanted it, Thomas wanted those teams probably weren't one or two seeds carried by running backs, but it just feels like we're in such a different time now. Purdy and they Dak have the same amount of yards and interceptions. Dak does have four more touchdowns. I mean, like I, I feel like the edge almost goes to the, if like if the Niners finish above the Cowboys if they win their division. There's no chance they give it to Purdy yeah. over Dak though. I almost feel like Purdy's not in this conversation. Like I think it's a huge narrative that Purdy gets carried. Like I think everyone says that. I guess so, but like, like I'm not a part of that. I think he's better than Jimmy G. I think he's a good QB, but 
MVPs, like a different conversation. Yeah, I guess so. I feel like I, if you put Purdy on uh, with the supporting cast that Dak has, I don't know if I want to pull that narrative, but like that will be the narrative. I, I agree with that. Sure, but it's also you know you know it sucks. It's like Purdy can't be MVP. Shanahan can't be Coach of the Year. It's because it's like. Shanahan's only good because his pieces. Well, his pieces are only good because of Shanahan. So, like, nobody wins an award. I think that the, the Coach of the Year award is, like, worse than yeah. the MVP by far. Like, the fact that Andy Reid never won it with Mahomes yeah. the past yeah. five years is ridiculous. Yeah. Like, that. that's annoying as hell. But, like, with MVP, I don't know. I feel like the case is – he's really fighting an uphill battle, Purdy. He needs to, like, go so far beyond expectations because of the supporting cast. Where I feel like Dak is really the one – Leading his team, but let's let's move into the other side of the ball for Dallas. Like Theron Bland, MVP, th- th- <laughs> the odds for defensive player of the year. He could be. I mean, like right yeah, now, the guy scored be. fucking what five picks, five uh, defensive touchdowns already, which yeah. is the record. For I think it's most more than DK year. Metcalf. Probably he he's, he's going to face a, DK Metcalf. A lot of fucking more guys. T- he has more TDs. He's the single highest graded cornerback right now per uh, per PFF. Per and most reliable source there is. Literally top top one of all time. PFF the goat. Uh, Tony Pollard. See, so continue to be fake good. They've gotten these like incredible matchups. Probably in for a row. one more. Yeah, it, I think he'll put up his fifteen fantasy points. But against again. Philly next week, nah, nah. Tony Pollard, the guy everybody was banging the table for to let loose, be the workhorse, give him all the touches. Now he stinks. Now they need Rico motherfucking Dowell <laughs> in there, changing the pace. Rico to save you. Yeah, Rico the new Tony P. It could happen, though. Like, listen, Seattle, I started compiling the data because I'm the data compiler here. Looking at Seattle, their defense, not great. 20th in EPA per play. But when you look at the run, it's really bad. 30th in EPA versus the run. Over the last five weeks, though, when you look at more recently, they have allowed the single most fantasy points per game to running back. Fourth most fantasy points per game to running back over the course of the year. 25th in fantasy points per game to outside wide receivers. Uh, so they're a lot better against the receivers on the outside in the passing game. They have not allowed a 90-plus yard receiver since week three, the GOAT, Adam Thielen. But <laughs> they are fifth in fantasy points allowed to slot wide receivers. All right, So they have a very clear path to succeed against them. It is over the middle, in the slot. We've got Cooks, who's been cooking, so he could have a big game got the running backs and Tony Pollard, maybe a little dowdle action, but they're very, very clear, concise in where they're good and where they're bad. And a lot of that boils down to the fact that their cornerbacks, the Seattle cornerbacks, have four ranked inside the top 27 in terms of coverage. They have the ninth best, 19th, 23rd, 27th. Devon Witherspoon, the rookie, has been top 10. Michael Jackson, shout out to you, JMO. Trey Brown and <laughs> Tariq Woolen. So they've got a really, really, really good group of outside cornerbacks, which has made it underratedly tough to throw the ball against them on the outside. But on the flip side, like Dallas's defense has also been really, really, really good. Still got Bobby B in the middle too. Apparently PFF the best go. linebacker. Yeah. To this day. <laughs> to this day. I agree with their grades. <laughs> They're horrible. Jared Goff, QB1 in the NFC. Dallas has allowed the fourth fewest fantasy points to both outside and slot wide receivers. Been really, really good against running backs as well. We already know Dallas has a great defense. So I don't know. I guess when I'm looking at this game, I'm – I'm thinking that the defenses might be better than the offenses on on this side of the ball, and I think this could be a sneaky under game. Oh, I think it's big under. It's kind of a high line. Yeah. High mid-40s, right? Yeah. Prime time. You got to love prime time unders. We'll get into that. Yeah. Let's talk some fantasy football. Yeah, let's let's jump. This is your lane, Jamo. Let's jump into fantasy. Geno Smith this year, straight up bad. Like, he's not a good QB. He's not half of what he was last year, it feels like. No, not even. You know what I I thought about earlier today? What if – Russell Wilson played for the Seahawks last year. They had a similar finish, right? Made the playoffs, maybe bounced first round or something, and then they made this trade. And this is this year of Geno's the only Geno we saw. Mm. Would we be like, oh, this is a fucking disaster? It's not great. I don't know. I feel like he earned enough goodwill from last year. Like the shit team that I, they put I, onto the field. I, I agree, but like, should he have that much good goodwill? It, it was a good year, but like it's been one year out of like an entire journeyman's career. But he set, like, the Seahawks' single-season passing record. Something what Russell Wilson could never do. And it's also, also, it's not like, on that point, I think, uh, going into last year, like, the Seahawks and the Giants, I think were looked at in the same category of, like, these guys are going to have top five picks no matter what. Both of them far surpassed their expectations. And then look at what the Giants did this year. Gino and uh, gino has been like relatively bad, but it's not like the Seahawks have been that bad. They're six and five right now. Sure, they're still they're fighting not for Giants play. bad, right? The and, Giants and the, are also rocking, not Daniel Jones. Sure, but even when they had Daniel Jones, they were terrible fair, too. So fair. it's like I kind of look at like you're if you want to blame a quarterback and you look at the situations, like Daniel Jones, he's someone that I don't feel like deserves a leash right now. Where Geno Smith, 
I think there's ups and downs and there's bad and good, but like if, if, if instead of six and five, they're like four and seven, then I'd be like, all right, maybe we need to have that conversation. But also with the, how much they're paying them, I think it was like 30 a year. Like that's a pretty fair price. Like you're not, it's not like you dropped a bag to give them the extension. Yeah. No, you didn't. Like but I mean, fantasy wise, you, you can't be feeling good about putting them in your lineup. No, no. I mean, I, mean, I got them at QB 18 this week and that feels generous. But it's just because how many guys you got are on six, by. six teams on. by. Yeah. yeah. But there's a lot of guys missing. Like, we got Allen, we got Joshua Dobbs, Mar Jackson. Like, he would easily be pushing, like, 24 range. It's like, a barely starter in a two-quarterback league. Yeah. Not barely, but low end. So, I mean, it's like, it's Dak you're starting, Gino you're not, unless you're in a super flex. Tony Pollard you're starting. Dude, uh, Tony Pollard, I've, I'm fine with where I have him, but the ECR has him, like, RB4. And RB4? I, I get it's, like, a good matchup, but I'm like, dude, I just you can't. You also have blowout potential, maybe. Maybe I get, that's what they're. I agree, but it's like they but they blowouts. I feel that. like they give it to Rico. I, yeah, that's also fair. blowouts. I feel like yeah are not by way of Tony Pollard. Like he never, he just doesn't make the big plays. He's it's been the same thing. Even his good games, like the last couple of games, have been fine because he scored. But it's not yeah. like he's having huge games. He's not like ripping off 150 and two touchdowns. Yeah, R- RB four is insane. That's that's mm-hmm. stupid. Zach Charbonnet though at RB 26. Do you think? This is one I I don't know where you're going with it. I wanted to put him higher, but Dallas's defense just scares me. Game script scares me, so I lowered him outside of where like he's worth a flex play. I think you're going too far in the other direction this time. Like I think uh, I should lower him. No, okay, I think he ahead. should be better. Like I think he okay. should be higher in the rankings because he had like a bad week last week, but he was still like the workhorse in that backfield. And had he ran a little bit more efficiently or scored a touchdown. He'd probably be jumped up a little bit higher, and Do I feel you, like that's the case. Okay, so see, you see his workload in a positive light, being like he could be more efficient. I kind of look at it as like, damn, he got so many touches, still did nothing. Like, what if he doesn't get that work? I'm. Or do they who, not? Who are they going to give it to though? I, I almost feel like they just don't like run the ball really. He catches a lot of balls though too. I guess yeah. that's fair, but I think it he almost was feels very like a, inefficient in the passing game, which sucks. Sure, but like taking a one game sample size for that, I feel like is the is usually the wrong way to is the, is the wrong way to look at it with players like that, in my opinion. I think a lot of times when we try, we're like we get psyched up, we're like, oh, it's all Zach Charbonnet now because Kendall Walker's out, has a bad game. We're like, ah, fuck him, we're off him. You know, that happened with like Devin Singletary. That's happened with like it happens a lot, I think, in fantasy where we try to take these one game sample sizes and then we completely write off the player. And then they still have the workload. I think that's fair. But, I mean, Devin I'm not Singletary really... was also, I feel like, going up against not the Cowboys. Yeah, that's what it is. I'm not really... Well, he played against the Bengals the first game, had a shit game. The Bengals are not a good defense at all. And then it was like, ah, fuck. And then he had a huge game. That happened with, like, Deontay Foreman, I think, too, when he was a starter the week before. I'm just saying, it's a trend that I've seen before, and I just don't think, like, we should necessarily write him off. Because, I mean, receptions the last three weeks, Charbonnet 4-6-4. Four, like he's he has a really high floor through the receiving game. He hasn't been great on the ground. I'll admit that for sure. But yeah, I guess so. I don't know. It it just feels like a very uninspiring play in Zach Charbonnet, even if the workload's baked in there. Yeah, that's fair. Wide receivers. Lamb, you're starting. Uh, Cooks is an interesting conversation because he's been he's been good. And like I said, Seattle does let up points to the to the slot wide receivers. Yeah, I think he's definitely worth a flex play, but I do think he's a little big play reliant. He's still not getting like a shit ton of targets. You're still relying on him. S- trying to do something with his three, four catches, which he has a good chance of, and it's worth starting because of that upside. But I'm just not going to shoo him in as a, you got to have him. That's fair. Let's talk about the uh, Seattle wide receivers. Yeah, DK, I have pretty high, like, compared to the rest. I still think he's worth a wide receiver, too. And this kind of goes back into me predicting how the game's going to go. I just think Seattle's going to be trailing, having to throw the ball. And in the past five weeks, he's a target monster. He Mm -hmm. hasn't done much with it, and – Five weeks deep, that's kind of like, hey, bro, if you haven't done something in five weeks, you might not do it in the six week. But he's fourth in targets for the past five weeks. Damn. He's getting the work. He's getting the volume. So I, I'm going to trust him one more time. <laughs> yeah, based on his production, I would not have assumed he was getting that many targets. Yeah, I was. Uh, I, I threw some stats in here for JSN. I was just looking at him because they, they had their buy in week five. So a lot of times we see the rookies get more involved. He's been on the field a ton, mm-hmm. basically running 80% of the route. So they've gone three wide receiver sets like really, really heavy. Only 10% target per route run rate, which is tiny, especially when you compare it to DK. He's been at 28%. He gets targeted on 28% of his routes. Lockett at 21%. JSN has seen 4% of the team's end zone targets. The other two are both above 40%. So Lockett and Metcalf have pretty much accounted for almost every single end zone target that Geno Smith has thrown, where JSN is uninvolved there. 
He's had three straight games of sub-10 full PPR points. He was supposed to be the guy who's like sucking up targets over the middle of the field, catching six, seven balls a game. He, didn't, it, he was supposed to be like what Adam Thielen, I feel like, is in Carolina right now, where it's like so many targets are going yeah. up, going to him, even if he doesn't be efficient on it, but he's not even getting targeted. He's a guy I'd still really like in Dynasty, but right now, maybe if Lockett doesn't play, we might see some juice, but I think he's probably going to. Lockett's going to play, yeah. Yeah, so he's kind of like – Cooks is if you just look at the box score, like he's going to get three, four catches and you just hope he does something with it. But as your point, the touchdown upside just isn't the same. Yeah, I, I think that's a good comp. Like they're probably in the same tier, but I would definitely start Cooks over JSN. We got Jake Fergie, tight end eight. Yeah, not much to go there. I mean, Noah Fant doesn't need to be talked about unless you think he's going to go over his 12 and a half yards. Fergie's always got that touchdown upside. Would you start Fergie over? I'm going to pull up some tight ends for this. I mean, before. Fergie's like, Fergie kind of feels like they're second option like maybe cooks is starting to edge in there a little bit yeah. but i want to say i was edging. like dead even or one off with fergie with ecr yeah yeah in my mind he's just he's had a couple like bad games in a row one for 35 three for 22 but the three games prior to that he was very good in fantasy he's, he's had a low floor like he has nice games but he's had games of 2.1 4.3 2.0 4.740 oh, which is pretty much like every tight end fantasy I guess but I'm just looking at like there are a lot of people that probably have Jake Ferguson and there are some decent options on the waiver wire this week I think would you start Isaiah Likely or Jake Ferguson or is or is Likely on a buy Likely's on a buy okay how about um how about like Jawan Johnson ah, think Ferguson. about the Saints passing offense like and Jawan Johnson I hate that Ju- man. well this is probably the one week just because everyone's fucked up. Lave out Michael Thomas out yeah. Rashid Jaheed out I would still go Jake because yeah. I don't know. I would just rather bet on this hot offense rather than the Saints. But I don't hate it. I don't know. Fergie's top 10 on the year. I think he's tied in eight on the year and half PPR. I'm just going to trust him one more time. I, I didn't. I don't think there's much to overthink here. I'm with it. I'm with the shits. All right, let's move on to some underdog slips. As always, underdog has provided you with an absolutely free square. Dak Prescott, all he's got to do is slip a yard in there. He's got to get on the field, produce one yard, and you will produce one win on your underdog record, okay? So go to underdog, and when you deposit for the first time using code BDGE, you're going to get double whatever you put into your account, plus that free square will pop up. And if you're not a new depositor, they throw out free squares all the time. You just got to turn your notifications on. They slip those in there. They come on for like 30 minutes at a time sometimes. They expire, but if you got notifications on, turn it on, get in there, get a free square. It doesn't matter if you're a first-timer, but if you are, code BDGE. My square for this game is going to be Zach Charbonnet, 12 and a half rushing attempts. Again, I just don't see a world where a Pete Carroll team does not at least try to rely on the run game to start. Will he be effective? I don't know. Will the passing game be effective? Probably not either, but I I imagine that they're going to try to keep Dak off the field. Last couple games, this is assuming Kenneth Walker's out. He had 14 last week. He had 15 the week before that. I just think... 13 is probably where he settles in. 13, 14, 15 is just uh, the constant theme for when Kenneth Walker's out. Um, I, I think he just sits around that range. Not too much analysis there. I just think Zach Charbonnet is the guy on early downs. If they start to get DJ Dallas involved, it's usually more in, a, in the passing game. That's always been like his involvement throughout his time and throughout his tenure in Seattle. Yeah, I don't hate it. It kind of feels like a 60, 40 odds that you're just going to lean one way. Yeah. Like you'll, you'll take the. Feels like it could bit. be a trap line for sure. I, yeah. I, I can feel that, but. Fuck it. We ball. What the fuck? You're taking Gino? What are you, are you taking him? Yeah, I was saying I was taking Gino out there. I asked and you said Gino rushing yards. So I thought you were being sarcastic. No, I'm taking I'm taking the exact opposite of this. <laughs> <laughs> Love this. Let's go. Okay, so why don't you guys make your points for, for this? So okay. they they, they both the wanted to take Gino. Basic thing ever. I think I'm reading a lot into the game script. I think Dallas is gonna be winning. I think the Seahawks are gonna be trailing. I think they're gonna need to throw the ball. Gino's averaging above this this year. I've taken him over two twenty four for those who can't see the screen. He's averaging 247 on the year in games finished, and on the road, he's averaging even more than that, 261. If the game script doesn't go the way I think, he's going to fly under this, but I, I just believe it should be pretty smooth flowing with Dallas being nine-point favorites. So I'm taking I'm taking the lower of this. I mean, 227, it's now up to 227 and a half, which only two quarterbacks. So we could both hit. We could. We could middle <laughs> it. 226. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, only two quarterbacks this year have gone over that line against Dallas. It was Sam Howell who threw for 300, and then Brock Purdy kind of just edged this out. MVP. MVP Brock Purdy. Not that a lot of good quarterbacks have faced Dallas this year, but Jalen Hurts went under this line. Justin Herbert, your goat, went under this line. Dallas, since week seven, is now 
first in EPA per play and first in EPA per dropback, and they're holding opposing quarterbacks to just 167 passing yards in a game. They also get to the quarterback quick. Geno takes a lot of sacks. I kind of just think Geno gets killed here. That's fair. You don't think he survives the game? I don't think he does. I think Drew Locke has to come in for a banged up Geno. Is Geno even like fully healthy? I, th- I think he's fine. I'm thinking about. I think he's okay. I think if anything, it affected him last week, but he's like probably close to 90, 95% at this point. I'm also kind of leaning back into why I have DK a little high. I'm just expecting him to be a little more efficient. Where could this be a 100 yard game from DK? Like that's a bullish take, but that's the way I'm leaning. You would so DK's at like like fifty nine and a half. I would be okay with taking DK's over. I would see. I really I thought about taking DK's under. Let's settle this with gut. <laughs> see what his tweets say tomorrow. All yeah. right, let's move on to the game predictions. Yeah, I'm going to take the under there, and I'm also going to take it's a lot of points for a team that's above five hundred. I will say though, they were like they were given like five and a half points versus the Ravens this year, and got their ass beat, yep. like taken out back to the shed. I think I'm going to take Dallas. And take Dallas. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna give the eight and a half points. I'm gonna take the under. I think I what you said. They're just gonna pressure Geno too much. And Dallas is a team like they're one of those teams that just like builds on their strength. Like they get these leads early on, and then they know that they could just kind of fucking pin their ears back and get after the quarterback. And there's not a lot of teams that are so th- it's like a compounding effect. It's like once they get up on you, they're so good at continuing to like dominate you on the defensive side of the ball that it's like they either. When they win, they win huge. That's yeah. why I think so many of their games they are like, such big They, like, blocks. parlay their attack to where when they hit, they just keep cashing. Right, because when they know that you're passing the ball, like, you're fucked. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm going to take the points with Dallas. Actually, I'm, I'm going to go with exactly what you said. I'm going to lay the points with Dallas, and I like the under. Um, I think within, like, the first five minutes of this game, we're, we'll kind of know the vibe of it, of uh, whether, like, this is Dallas, this is, like, a Dallas beat down, or it's going to be close. It makes me feel a lot better that Dallas is at home. I feel like they play way better at home. I feel like Geno on the road isn't as good. I hate taking teams in Seattle. I feel like that's such a tough fucking environment to play in. Yeah. And, all, I mean, on the flip side, like, I don't know the exact splits, but Dallas at home is a different animal than Dallas on the road. Max. And so it all kind of, to me, it all kind of lines up that this is like a Dallas beatdown. But, you know, Dallas does weird shit like drop games to the Josh Dobbs Cardinals and yeah. fucking. Yeah. That's so You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as much as I was reading into, like, earlier, like, Seattle's going to be trailing the games. Where it, to me, it feels like a d- due game for Dallas, where they might just be fuckheads and drop this one. They're, they're due for their, like, Shit humble, yeah. Yeah. Their, their reality check. Where we could humble just drop pie. the MVP yeah. talks immediately. Yeah. yeah. But that's As soon as we get to that point where we're sitting here being like, Dak MVP, that's yeah. usually yeah. when When the narrative it. goes that strong, yeah. yeah, that's when it's due to get fucking rug pulled. I also just think them getting their ass cranked last week. A little ass cranking. <laughs> yeah. I, I do I like, like I, I really do like that narrative though that like one team has to like sit with that loss. They're both I, have I extra kinda, rest. Like they're well both no, they're both on the same rest. It's been I'm one saying, week. They both have extra re- Oh yeah. yeah, they both play Thursday. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> they 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 both have normal rest. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, for me it just comes down to the weather, I guess. Sixty and <laughs> clear, like can't complain. <laughs> Dak and Gino in nice warm weather. Seattle <laughs> needs rain. Say about that. Gino needs rain in yeah. order to fucking hit up there in Seattle. Is this going to be a big game? 37-30. Like, with the line moving up, is this going to be a high-scoring game? I, I just... Mean, I, is Seattle, I feel like fucking... Or, I don't know. Or is it going to be, like, 30 Dallas and Seattle 10. puts up, like, a joke 17? Maybe. Yeah. I mean, it's a, big, it's a big game in terms of, like, playoff picture. Like, do you think Seattle connects on deep balls? Like, does Dallas let up big plays like that? Like, do you see... <laughs> In the first like eight minutes of the like game, Durant is Gino connecting with D- DK Metcalf on like a deep ball? Like probably not. Like I don't know. I think Various Ward fucked him up last week. Hell yeah! I think uh, Gino <laughs> hanging on to the ball. Why'd you say that? Hell yeah! It's a Niners fan. Yeah. I don't know. It just <laughs> felt weird. <laughs> Hell yeah! He fucked him up. Hang. Ass cranked him. Yeah. <laughs> Crank, Crank that, that ass. ass. Hang. All right, take us away. All right, take us away, Jamo. Just all right, Jamo. I need to. We need to cut this. Take us away. I did. Did you? That's our Thursday night preview. Thank you. Give us a like. Give us a sub. Give us some love. Peace.